so here today we'll be discussing about composite or uh, fleece beam so let us start uh, our discussion on composite or fleece beam so let us consider a uh, beam of rectangular cross section like this this uh, neutral axis will pass through the midpoint uh, of this uh, h that is uh, through cg the strain distribution will be like this the strain will be zero here maximum here and minimum here and uh, if we assume that the loading on this beam which is of cross uh, rectangular cross section is acting in vertical downward direction that is the downward transverse load is applied then the beam will sag and upper fibers will be under compression lower fiber will be under tension we can use a simple hooks law within elastic limit or proportional limit so that to, to find out the value of stresses at each and every point of our choice so for this particular point the e value is to be epsilon value is to be taken here multiplied by e i will get value of sigma like this so no doubt the scale for this strain diagram and stress diagram will be entirely different if we take another section we find that the neutral axis shifts uh, downward and then the strain diagram takes this, this shape and accordingly the stress diagram takes this, this shape and here we can see that the sigma c is more as compared to sigma d, t that is the induced stress is the tensile stress is less as compared to compressive stress but uh, if uh, it means that if we use this type of section and we use a material which is having uh, same strength in tensor, tension and compression that that material uh, strength is not properly utilized so we have to uh, make this particular uh, portion may be weaker or this particular portion may be weaker or this particular portion may be stronger depending on what type of requirement we have whether we need um, more strength in compression or we need less strength in uh, more more strength in tension so depending on the our our requirement we try to uh, select a section or sometime we change the material and take two different materials uh, with two different properties and we place material materials in such a way that they are utilized for their full strength in compression and tension so uh, those uh, materials those uh, beams uh, by combining two different materials are known as fleece beam and uh, we assume following thing that uh, materials are bonded properly it means that the strain at interface is same for both the materials and the moment of resistance is shared by both the cross section so this is the example of list beam where my first material first material and second material they are placed on one another and they are, they are bonded here the two different material one another material is sandwiched between these two materials here uh, the sandwich is in horizontal uh, plane so here it is again the, uh, the it is the one material is sandwiched between two materials so all these are the examples of list beam these three beams are symmetrical about x and y axis this uh, particular beam is uh, uh, symmetrical only about y axis so uh, let us let it be again emphasized that these are the cross sections so, so the length of beam is perpendicular to the uh, plane of this uh, image uh, so it is on these are the only cross section that we have shown now let us uh, try to find out how the stress and strain distribution will be there so uh, material number one exists from here to here then it is material number two and then again material number one neutral axis will be like this the strain we have assumed that at interface the strain will remain same so that is why the strain distribution curve is just like this uh, from uh, this to this it is material number one material number two and then again material number one the stress will be obtained by multiplying the corresponding values of modulus of elasticity so that is why if we assume that e1 is greater than e2 then stress distribution will be like this here uh, material number two is not available from here to here so that is why for material number two there is no stress between this only stress is available here stress is induced here and here 
so for material number 2 the stress because e2 is less so that is why the strain is same stress will be less as compared to the stress at the interface in material number 1 similarly if we assume that e1 is equal to e2 this stress distribution will remain same as if it is made up of the same material and if the case is some uh, e1 is less than e2 in that case the stress will be uh, less as compared to the stress uh, in material number 2. The stress will be less in material number 1 as compared to material number 2 at the interface and then the corresponding values as we obtained. If we take another example of uh, flisk beam here the material number 1 is there from here to here material number 2 is there from here to here as material number 2 is not here between uh, in this portion so that is why stress and strain both will not be available for material number 2 in these portions so this is how the strain diagram will be uh, look like so as the strain is from here to here material number 1 and strain is available only uh, is induced only for the section uh, between this to this depth so similarly we can plot the stress diagram again the stress is uh, uh, induced from this point to this point and stress for material number 2 from this point to this point and if we have, we have assumed this E1 is more so that is why the stress at the interface in material number 1 is more as compared to the stress at interface of material number 2. Similarly we can draw this E1 is equal to E2 and then E1 is less than E2. So this is how we can uh, see the stress distribution uh, diagram of all these. Now uh, we can uh, analyze the stresses in flisk beam, how the stresses are computed and for that we have to just recall our basic assumption that whatever moment is applied that moment is registered by material number 1 and material number 2. So total moment we can write down it is equal to m1 plus m2 where m1 is the resisting moment in uh, material number 1, m2 is the resisting moment in material number 2. Both are bent in a, a same radius uh, if, uh, in with one neutral axis. So that is why we can you make use of our bending equation to write down the values of m1 and F, m2 resisting moment m1 and m2. So with just a small simplification will give us value of m as sigma 1 over y1 and uh, i1 plus m i2 where m is the ratio of e2 over 1 that is the uh, modular uh, ratio it's called modular ratio and we can find out m by this formula where i1 plus uh, m into i2 is i equivalent this i equivalent means we are converting everything in material number 1 so i equivalent means if we convert material number 2 in terms of in material number 1 then this i equivalent is there and to convert this I should multiply I2 with value of M. So let us uh, will be this will be more clear in uh, one example problem and let us see how this is obtained. Now this is the uh, modified value it is the uh, M into I2 can be written as I2 dash so this is uh, in the, uh, the value of I2 that is about its uh, neutral axis. So if we multiply we take combine these m and b we can have another uh, width that is b dash which is equal to m into b so if i want to convert material number 2 into material number 1 i have to multiply the width of material number 2 by its modular ratio and then we can see it will be equivalent to material uh, number 1 so this uh, is the equivalence if we want to convert 2 into 1 so we have to multiply this uh, like this if we want to convert 1 into 2 then we have to um, we use m as e1 by e2 because we are converting 2 into 1 and we are converting here uh, sorry 2 into 1 here and 1 into 2 here so this is how we can uh, find out the equivalent sections. So this is uh, all about flisk beam. Uh, now we will take one uh, in next lecture. 
uh, we'll uh, take one example how to solve these problems so thank you thank you very much for watching this video for more such stuff you can visit uh, my site that is www.classconnect.in and register there thank you